Howdy, howdy, guys. So this is the lecture that goes along with today's Nearpod. So I've got the Nearpod pulled up on my computer. Um, my QuickTime player is not working, so I'm not going to be able to uh, show you guys this while also simultaneously filming it. So you're just going to have to watch uh, me kind of lecture over it. So please follow along uh, with the Nearpod on Canvas. So we're going to start learning about Europe. Europe's incredibly interesting to learn about because there's so much rich history here. You have history we're going to get to talk about that includes the Greeks, uh, the Trojan War. You have history that goes to the Romans. The Romans obviously build the Colosseum. They build all these aqueducts. They build thousands and thousands of miles of roads. Um, then after this, we'll slowly get into the Dark Ages. We'll get into the Middle Ages. We'll talk about the uh, Renaissance with art such as Mona Lisa. We'll even talk about the French Revolution, which is incredibly fascinating because literally heads will roll. Literally, it's crazy. Um, and then after that, we even talk briefly about the American Revolution because that's kind of linked with the French Revolution. Um, and then we go into World War I and we learn about how World War I caused World War II. Um, so hopefully by the end of this unit, you're gonna start to see a lot of connection um, World War I. Without it, World War II would have never happened. Um, and there's things that lead up to that. Uh, it's easy for us to look at this with hindsight. You know, hindsight's always 2020. Looking back at the past, we can always be like, oh, that's obvious. Um, so, Europe introduction. Um, Europe is a fairly large continent. Uh, it obviously is not the largest. It is not the smallest. Um, but it's got a big population. It's got almost 800 million people, which is fairly large when you compare it to, you know, Australia or Antarctica or even North America. But when you look at Asia, it's not even close. Obviously, Asia has the most. Um, it consists of a large landmass. Um, it essentially goes from Iceland. Iceland is that little island on here all the way to the left, and it stretches all the way to Russia. About one third of Russia is in Europe. The other two thirds of Russia are in Asia. There's a line called the Ural Mountains that actually splits Europe um, from Asia and it runs right through the middle, kind of the middle of Russia. So it's about the third of the size of Africa. We know Africa is fairly large. Hopefully that helps put it in perspective for you. Um, there are 46 countries in Europe. Out of this 46 countries, 27 are members of the European Union. The European Union is important, and we're going to kind of learn about them later. Uh, there's a picture here of Santorini, Greece. Absolutely beautiful. This is one of the top vac vacation spots in the world. Um, one of the world's most active volcanoes is actually not too far away from here. Uh, I encourage you guys to look up other pictures of Santorini, Greece. They're absolutely stunning. Uh, Greece is obviously where Greek culture takes place at, and, and we'll learn more about that later. But this is a part of Europe. It's absolutely beautiful along the Mediterranean Sea. Gorgeous stuff. All right, so the highest mountain peak in Europe. Obviously, I'm a big mountain guy. I love mountains. Um, it is Mount Elbrus. It is in Russia. It stands at almost 18,000 feet. That's not that big compared to Asia. Asia's got the Himalayas, Mount Everest. Mount Everest is 10,000 feet taller than Mount Elbrus here. <laughs> The largest lake is actually kind of interesting. It is in uh, the northern part of Russia. It's called Lake Ladadaga. And I believe it is one of the world's deepest lakes as well as it freezes over. Um, so that's pretty fascinating. I encourage you guys to look at pictures of that. It's a pretty, uh, pretty lake. The longest river is in Russia. It's called the Volga River. The Volga does freeze over parts of it. Um, it freezes so thick, in fact, in some parts that you can drive your car across it. Um, it is 3,000 miles or 2,000 miles long. Obviously, um, a comparable size would be the Mississippi River. Okay, um, it's not like the Amazon, it's not like the Nile. Those rivers are about 4,000 miles long. Um, it's not quite that long. Here's a picture of hmm, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Paris, of course, Paris is a pretty city. Uh, it is kind of rough in some parts, but it is a pretty cool city if you're into art um, and rich culture. It's a cool city to check out. All right, moving on. The smallest country in Europe is actually Vatican City. It is located inside of Rome. So you have a country 
inside of another country. Vatican City is inside Rome, which is inside of Italy. It is the one of the world's smallest countries. Um, it's got almost a thousand people that live in it, including the Pope. Um, the biggest country by land size is going to be Russia. Um, it is not a huge, pop, hugely populated country, Russia. It's got about 120 million. Um, that's about the same population as Mexico. Okay. However, Russia is much larger. Languages. There are over 200 languages within Europe. Um, if you go to Europe, you're going to be able to communicate with almost everybody. Most people do speak English. Not everybody, but most people do uh, speak, speak English there. Um, all right, moving on here. This is a picture of the Colosseum. Kind of destroyed. Not much left of the Colosseum. Okay, so Europe, the European Union. The European Union's goal is to promote, promote peace. I can't talk. All right, one of the big reasons for this is obviously because of World War I and World War II. Um, they want to bring peace in Europe. They don't want another country to go rogue and kill millions of people. They want to see peace. Um, it consists of 27 countries. It did consist of England. However, uh, the United Kingdom left the European Union. Um, and one of the reasons was was they, they, they wanted safety and they felt as if they weren't getting... Uh, they weren't safe within the European Union. One of the reasons is, is because you really don't need a passport to travel within the European Union if you're Europe, you European. Um, you also, um, it, there's some other benefits. So most of these countries use the same currency. They use the euro. Um, that can be problematic, especially when a country like Greece joins and Greece has a huge amount of debt. Um, they join with all their debt. The currency is going to come down. It's going to drop some. So that was another disadvantage of the European Union. There are many benefits uh, to being in the European Union. There's also benefits to not being in it. Again, the biggest reason for it is to promote peace. And there's a video here. It's about a five minute introduction. It tells you all about the European Union. And that is it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the intro to Europe. It's full of rich history. It's also got a lot of cool geography. And we're going to continue to learn more about it as we go along. Have a good day.